Well, good morning and greetings, delegates, distinguished guests, and my friends. It's my honour to be President of your Ontario Federation of Labour. This year, as we assemble in our democratic tradition, we celebrate 60 years as a federation, 60 years of organizing, of building a movement of unity, 60 years of struggle and progress and learning. We are stronger together. Now, we have important work to do this week. I look forward to building our solidarity, defining our action plan, and collaborating on how we make our vision reality. Therefore, be it resolved, we power on towards a brighter future for every worker for all in the province of Ontario. <laughs> Friends, there is power in our union. We will look back on many great contributions and victories that the Federation of Labour has brought to the lives of working people and to the social and economic fabric of this province. And we will look forward to the work ahead and the challenges that together we will tackle. The theme of my President's report is the next 60. But as Bob Marley once famously noted, if you don't know you passed, you don't know your future. Let me start by reminding you what our Federation represents and why our work has been and continues to be so important. Our Federation was established in 1957, 60 years ago today. In 1957, delegates from two of Ontario's biggest Labour Federations voted to form the OFL, the Ontario Federation of Labour. They elected Cleve Kidd as the first president and he worked to set a path for the OFL that amplified the power of working people. Our organization was born out of a need to unite our strength and that's what we've done. On that front, not much has changed in the last 60 years. Our mandate today, as it was then, is to unite our movement and to harness our collective power. Through our first two decades, the Federation carried forward the hopes of a generation of workers eager to climb out of poverty and create a fairer society for all. Much as we still do today, our new Federation tackled some of the most controversial and important challenges and struggles of the day. Racism, discrimination, and oppression. Unfortunately, that battle against racism, bigotry and discrimination is still being waged today. From 1958 to 1976, David Archer led the OFL. We know that today, immigrant workers often face dangerous conditions at work, high unemployment and poverty. That was true in the 1960s too and the OFL fought to end the exploitation of immigrant workers and make significant gains. Labour activists fought for civil rights. Today we fight for a higher minimum wage in Ontario. In our early years, the OFL organized and support the minimum wage itself, a national wage index to inflation. It was 1965 and we won that fight. And do you know what that minimum wage was back then? It was $1.25 an hour. Again, like today, we champion policies that would encourage full employment and provide for the health and safety of working people everywhere. That commitment to, cha to change laid the foundation, the building block and stepping stone to lift thousands out of poverty. In the 1970s, the OFL further developed its grassroots activism. We demanded fairness, unity and justice. Like today, we expanded our reach outside our own membership, leading the charge, organizing community groups and progressive thinkers determined to make a better Ontario a better Canada. 
We knew change was needed. We became feminists. We became environmentalists. Some of us were even communists. We demanded equality, fairness, justice, and respect for women. We demanded environmental regulation. We demanded social justice. This has not changed. These are still our fights, delegates. We knew that making these changes in unions and in workplaces was not always easy. But under the leadership of Cliff, Cliff Pilkey, the OFL led the charge by being the first federation in North America to have designated board seats for women delegates. That activism, the push to grow and change continues within our union movement today. Our labor movement needs to grow if we are going to truly address the concerns that workers are facing today. Recognition of the role and importance of women and our movement defines our movement. By the mid-70s, women were more than 35% of the workplace. Today, women make up the majority of our movement, strengthening our resolve and our commitment to change. You just sang this refrain, women make our union strong. During the late 70s and into the early 80s, we faced unprecedented levels of unemployment and inflation. And we needed to do even better for our changing membership. Many workers were being marginalized in the workplace. Women and racialized workers especially faced discrimination on the job. Alongside women and racialized workers, we said no to discrimination and exploitation. Women were underrepresented in union leadership. So the OFL made a change. We pushed for affirmative action. We created workshops and training that built understanding across our province. By the late 1980s, under the leadership of President Gord Wilson and the OFL executive, our fight went international. We united to face down a tidal wave of global restructuring that would wash over Ontario, eroding manufacturing base in the process. In the late 1980s, the Conservative government of Brian Mulroney was negotiating away good paying jobs under the free trade agreement with the United States and pitting worker against worker in the process. The threat of massive job loss was real. We demanded fair trade, not free trade. This, too, is still our fight today. In the mid-1990s, free trade expanded to Mexico. Under NAFTA, we saw the rise of multinational corporations and attacks on workers' rights. The Federation focused its power on protecting jobs here in Ontario and across Canada. Sound familiar? After eight years of decimating international free trade agreements, the OFL flexed its muscle and united against the common sense revolution of Mike Harris. I'm looking around this room, and I know many of you remember those years. In those years, we were united against the common sense revolution. Years of progress on workers' rights and equality was under attack. You know what we did then? Remember the days of action? We shut down the province and sent a strong message and clear message to those that sought to suppress us. Labour will not stay silent. Labour does not give up. Labour gets into the streets and Labour fights back. <laughs> Friends, we may be in for a similar fight in Ontario very soon. And like we did in the mid-90s, we will rise again to defend our rights. 
we will defend the rights of working people in this province. At that time, Labour watched in horror as the crisis in Ipawash unfolded. We demanded better for First Nations people, Inuit and Métis. We must continue today to work towards reconciliation. From 1995 to 2003, Harris tore apart the social fabric of this province and Labour resisted every step of the way. We fought privatization. We fought deregulation. Wayne Samuelson led the Federation from 1997 to 2009. The old file recognized the hardships faced by Ontarians who were being pushed into poverty by Mike Harris's policies of privatization and deregulation. Again, the Federation used its power to create change. In 2001, we convened community gatherings to develop the People's Charter of Ontario. With the Charter in hand, the OFL was ready to power on. The OFL knows the importance of our mission. It is not just to serve the needs of unionized workers, but to improve working conditions across the board, to organize the unorganized and build up our movement. We encourage young workers to engage with our movement. We knew that the young workers of the day would be our leaders of the future. Over the past 10 years, the labour movement has confronted growing government threats to hard-won worker, union, social and political protections. We organized against the anti-worker legislation, austerity budgets, skyrocketing inequality, rising rates of poverty, and yet again, the further privatization of public assets. During the presidency of Sid Ryan, we reinvigorated our activist base, equipping them with the tools they needed to lead the fight back. We gathered as a common front to solidify and, and unite labour with the broader community. Under Sid's direction, we said, enough is enough to careless employers that put profit before safety. We said, if you kill a worker, you go to jail. <laughs> Delegates, since 2015, I have had the privilege of leading our Federation. It's an important time. The OFL has been focused on reasserting workers' interests during the Changes Workplaces Review. It's the biggest overhaul of Ontario's labour and employment laws in more than a generation. As we have done for in decades before, the Federation is building capacity within our communities, amplifying the voices of vulnerable workers, migrant workers, our allies in the LGBTQ community, injured workers, and workers with disabilities. Last year, in partnership with the Fight for 15 and Fairness, we launched the Make It Fair campaign, which is among the largest multi-union and sustained campaigns that the Federation has organized in years. <laughs> and delegates, we have made great gains. The goal of the Make It Fair campaign is simple to bring together labour and community to share in creating a framework for decent work across Ontario. And here's what we wanted. Meaningful legislative change. And friends, we have some major victories to celebrate. Later this week, up at Queen's Park, we're going to see some long-awaited improvements to Ontario's labour and employment laws. I tell you what, there are changes for the better. We made gains. We made gains because of the hard work of activists in this room and across our province. These changes are coming because communities and labour councils mobilized and demanded better. Our Make It Fair campaign was active and visible in Guelph, Toronto, Oakville, Hamilton, Peel, 
Niagara, Kitchener Waterloo, London, Sudbury, Thunder Bay, North Bay, Windsor, Ottawa, Peterborough, Durham, and Kingston, and across Ontario. Delegates, I want to acknowledge the tireless work of the Fight for 15 and Fairness campaign for raising the bar when it comes to community activism. A rise in the minimum wage to $14 in a little over a month, and then to $15 by January the 1st, 2019. It's happening because we were united in our demands for fairness for every worker in this province. We didn't just stop at an increase to the minimum wage. We fought for mandating equal pay for equal work for temp agencies and part-time workers. We fought for and won improved scheduling practices and the expansion of just cause protection for unionized workers during bargaining periods. We fought for and won an additional paid week of vacation for extending personal emergency days to all workers. We fought for and won improvements to facilitate a worker's right to join a union when an employer breaks labour laws. And friends, we fought for and won the removal of restrictions for workers to return to work after a strike. We fought for and won provisions that require employers to provide a statutory declaration of the actual number of employees in a proposed bargaining unit. We fought for and won the removal of language which would have mandated only one union exist in a situation where multiple unions represent workers in the same workplace. We told the government this was undemocratic, that workers should be the ones that decide who represents them, not the Labour Board. We fought to match Ontario's pregnancy and parental leave rules with similar provisions under federal law. We fought for a return to card-based certification across the board so that those wishing to join a union can do so in one step. Now, we won card-based certification in three additional sectors of our economy, and I can assure all of you that fight is far from over. Excuse me. We told the government we had no interest in waiting six months after royal assent for the changes to the Labour Relations Act to take effect. We won that too. We demanded that survivors of domestic and sexual violence receive job-protected paid leave. And last week, last week before Bill 148 went to committee for clause-by-clause -clause hearings, we won five paid days of job-protected leave. Now, it's not as much as we want it, but it's a start, delegates. Friends, <laughs> friends, one thing is for sure. Had Labour and our community partners not been so organized and vocal in our demands for decent work, we would not have made those gains. We did, didn't get everything we asked for, but as history shows, this fight isn't over yet. But remember, great gains can be wiped away if they're not entrenched. We must continue to power on. Now, I just spoke to you about some of the great advances we've accomplished together. Allow me to tell you about a few more. Two years ago, myself, Patty Coates, and Ahmed Gaid were elected with a mandate to unite our labour movement and to ensure the OFL was on solid financial footing for the fights ahead. Since that time, we've welcomed SEIU and OPSU back into the House of Labour.
to Charlene and to Smokey and to your entire membership. Thank you for your commitment to our federation. We are stronger for it, but we're not done yet. Delegates, I'm so pleased to announce that come January, we will have the Ontario Nurses Association back to the House of Labour. So to Vicki McKenna and Andy Summers that are here from Ona today, I want to thank you and the Ona membership for your belief in our federation. Sooner or later, folks, we're going to need a bigger room to hold these conventions. <laughs> but that's the commitment. That's the commitment we made to you two years ago. We were not only going to resurrect our Fed, we were going to unite our labour movement, and we still have work to do, but I commit to you that we are going to power on to make this the strongest federation Ontario has seen in a long, long time. I know this afternoon, Patty and Amit will tell you more about the work that we've been doing on behalf of the federation. We've joined you on the picket lines, building solidarity across the province. We've supported the Keep Hydro Public campaign. We've rallied to keep transportation public, to keep the gaming industry public, and our airports as well. After a whole lot of work and negotiating, the Ontario Federation of Labour regained funding for our longtime health and safety program, and we've renamed it Prevention Link. So delegates, this year, the OFL is 60 years old. Think about that. Think about the changes we've made happen in those 60 years. Just let it sink in. Now think about the next 60 years. It will be 2077. We might be at that big bargaining table in the sky by then. Or some of you might still be in arbitration. <laughs> but more seriously, all of us know young people. Think about the world you want for them. That's what we're shooting for, folks. In 60 days, it will be January. And we'll be half a year away from the next provincial election. We must mobilize our members, one million members, to champion a workers' agenda and elect a government that will do the same here in Ontario. <laughs> 60 hours from now, it will be Wednesday night at 11 p.m. By that time, the government will most likely have passed Bill 148. We will have made gains, delegates. But you know what? At 11 p.m. on Wednesday, we are also going to know what we need to keep fighting for in this province. And I know that you'll be right alongside me in solidarity, campaigning and building our communities towards victories. For the next 60 hours, you're going to be at convention. I know that you'll be meeting with activists and debating resolutions. Take this time to engage and build connections here. Some people in the crowd are probably looking forward to the lunch hour. I'll be done in about an hour and a half. In that 60 minutes, take a look around you and think about the servers, the cooks, 
cleaners who are getting a raise to the minimum wage because of our activism together across this province. Now you might think that 60 seconds isn't really long enough to do much. I'm here to tell you that's not true. Today, take 60 seconds, one minute, take out your phone and connect yourself to the labor community. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Stay in touch, stay connected. The labor movement is always making change. From a small moment to a span of years, we are making a difference, folks, for every worker across the province. Lastly, the last two years leading this federation has been extremely challenging. Extremely challenging. But we are a better federation today. I want to take a moment to recognize and to thank our staff, members of COPE Local 343. I've asked them to come in the auditorium, and I'll tell you why. I'm not a boss, delegates. I'm a worker. I've represented workers for 30 years. And I've dealt with some pretty nasty employers. But one thing that's not hard to do, no matter where you work, every worker deserves to be respected. Every worker deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. That's not hard to do. These folks that have just come on stage, Amelia, Carol Ann, Aaron, Etheraju, Jane, Judy, Jody, Kathy, Lori, Megan, Melissa, Ogle, Paulette, Renata, Rob, Sue, Tavaki, Vern. These folks here help our Federation run like a fine oiled machine. Please give them a great round of applause. Delegates, delegates, without, without this staff, our federation wouldn't run as well as it does today. So thank, me, thank you for helping me recognize the great work members of COPE Local 343 do for us at the federation. Thank you. So friends, if we are, as a united labor movement, we are not constantly pushing for change, pushing for progress, pushing the government of the day to do better by working people in this province, who will do it? Think about that. If not us, who will? Any gains we have ever won and we, and we have fought for, nothing has ever been handed to us. Unions have always fought to improve the lives of their members. And my commitment to each of you here is to continue that fight across Ontario on behalf of every worker across this province. Let's power on the working class. Let's power on our movement to even greater heights. Let's power on together. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech. Enjoy your convention. Thank you very much.